Millennials. I know. Trust me, I know. You've heard it. They're all raised by helicopter parents who don't allow their little cupcakes to fail. But my next two guests say failure is just fine by them, and in fact, that it may be a key to success. Millennial Kristen Hadid is the author of Permission to Screw Up and the CEO of the cleaning company Student Made, which only hires millennials. And Rachel Simmons is author of the upcoming book Enough As She Is. She runs a Failing Well initiative for college students. Apparently, we have to put it in a book now so they understand. Mom and dad will not be there at all times, and sometimes you're going to have to fail and figure out how to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move on. All right, so, Kristen, I love that you... You wanted a $99 jeans, mm -hmm. and you knew your mom and dad were not going to get that for you, and that is how your business was born. Tell us. So I was a student at the University of Florida. I thought I wanted to be an investment banker, and one day I walked into the mall, saw these jeans, had to have them, knew my parents would never, ever in any universe give me the money to buy them. And so I put an ad on Craigslist to clean a house, thinking that would be an easy way to make the money. Mm -hmm. And I did a terrible job. But uh, miraculously, the woman hired me back every week, and it, that's how it started. That was 10 years ago. So, and, yeah. so now you run your own business. You only hire millennials. I know mm -hmm. your first job, um, you decided to sit outside while everybody else was, was, or you were inside in the air conditioning. They were outside in the hot sun. And they all walked out. And you learned yourself, you've got to work. You've got to set a good example. Mm -hmm. But how do you communicate that to them? I mean, do you ever get you know, the helicopter parents calling you saying, little Dorothy's overworked. So that moment was really defining for me. I was 21. I had no idea what leadership was. I was sitting in this air-conditioned clubhouse while my employees were cleaning filthy apartments, and I thought that was leadership. And so cleaning isn't fun, and then you have a boss who doesn't seem to care about you, and they, they walked out, 45 of, of the 60. And I got them back by, by admitting that I didn't know anything about leadership. Mm -hmm. I promised early paychecks, and pizza, if they came to this meeting, I apologized. And that's when I realized failure is really important because it, it causes you to reflect and to grow and learn mm -hmm. in that you know, moment. And so I wanted to give my employees the opportunity to, to do that as well, mm -hmm. to grow and learn from their own failures. And you know, the, the problem is I do think there are too many parents today who try to protect, you know, derisively calling them cupcakes, but kids who were raising to be cupcakes mm -hmm. by trying to pretend that they're never going to have to fail, they're never going to have any offense in their life, nothing bad is ever going to happen to them. And when they get away from us, they find out the hard way it will. All of that's going to happen. So how do we teach them at a younger age to deal? So I think Kristen's example is great. You model it. I have met parents who say, I think I'm doing a great job when I don't tell my child about my failures. And I say to them, well, then your kid's going to be afraid to tell you about their failures. So parents have to apologize in front of their kids. They have to say, I screwed up and not beat themselves up when they do, right? You can't say, oh, I'm such an idiot, but okay, I made a mistake. I'm going to try again. What do you say when the parents call you up and say, well, she needs a raise or, you know, I, I know you get complaints from their parents. It happens. We have parents who want to be a part of the interview. Or, <laughs> or, you know, how can you say that my, my son or daughter needs to be a better duster? And I'm like, well... OMG. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, but I think we, we both have the same goal. We want the child to be successful. So I just remind, you know, if we let them figure this out on their own, if, we, if you have them ask for the time off or the feedback is critical to growth, you know, if we can just have them do Here, this... They'll, I have they'll, a line for you on the yeah. next phone, such phone call. I'm going to do you the favor of pretending this never happened. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, who are these parents who interfere mm -hmm. with their children's every move? And I know you said, Rachel, that you were a Rhodes Scholar. I, I was. Went I to Oxford and failed. And now you are happy to say it loud and proud. And now you've told the whole country about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that you, that you, because you're obviously a very smart woman, you're not afraid to share that. Why? I was for a long time, but I'm not afraid because I see what it means to young people to hear someone they admire say, I screwed up and I survived, and I'm still a good person. I'm still enough as I am. And I was so afraid to tell people about having dropped out and about having failed, and actually telling people has been really liberating. And I think that's also something we discover. By talking about our failures, we feel a lot less shame about them. I think most of us have done worse things than fail at Oxford. Right? As a Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> Thank you And I've both. done many, many things since. <laughs> yes, yeah, including write this book. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming on and yes. talking about it openly. Ladies, thank you. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here.
to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.